<laughs> okay, we're going to talk about winter today. Right away, it's important to know that you should be preparing most of these things before winter actually hits. If you found yourself in the dark, freezing and hungry, it's probably way too late already. So make sure you do them in your first autumn. Let's talk about freezing or temperature management first. A thermal stone, or better, a couple of them, is gonna be indispensable. You can craft it with a pickaxe, three flint and ten pieces of rocks. The thermal stone will absorb warmth from a heat source, and then keep you warm for a good amount of time. The thermal stone will lose heat continuously until all of its heat has escaped. You can repair a thermal stone to restore its durability with a sewing kit. I often prepare several of these at a time, but you want to make sure you don't leave them next to a fire pit, because they will lose durability when the heat runs out. You can leave them next to a scaled furnace, as this one will never run out of heat, and thus no changes in temperature occur. The scaled furnace is basically a fire pit that never runs out of heat, but only has a very small light radius. Defeating the dragonfly will yield you with the blueprint for it, as well as the scales and gems needed to craft it. That is something I would advise you not to focus on for now. It is very unlikely that you're going to be able to defeat Dragonfly before your first winter if you're new to the game. Regardless of the fact that the desert is my favorite biome to base in, the magma pools are also excellent to warm you and your thermal stones up for free in the early game. I often see newer players never leave their bases in winter, because the fire pit is the only place where they will feel safe and warm. However, I would highly advise you to avoid doing that. Crafting a torch comes as cheap as two pieces of grass and two twigs. Therefore, it's much cheaper than maintaining any fire pit or campfire. You've got hundreds of trees on your map. Don't be afraid to grab your torch and set one ablaze if you find yourself freezing or in the dark during winter. Just make sure you only burn individual ones and don't accidentally set berry bushes or other valuable resources on fire during this. The star caller stuff is an insanely powerful item that will summon a dwarf star that will last up to three and a half days, with 20 uses, would leave you with a total duration of 70 days of light and warmth. If you manage to obtain one of these, you won't have to worry about freezing for the next couple of winters. You can craft it at the ancient pseudoscience station in the ruins. The two living lost can be easily found felling a totally normal tree that you sometimes find in a dark forest biome. Entering the ruins for the first time can be quite challenging. But there is a high chance you're just able to outrun the enemies. You don't have to pick every fight you encounter. But be prepared and have some armor on you. You can obtain yellow gems from Dragonfly as well, or with a little bit of luck you do sometimes find them in the ruins by mining full side statues. Now let's talk about some warm clothing. A winter hat is one of the easier things to craft to keep you warm, only costing you 4 beefalo wool and 4 silk. To obtain the wool just shave some beefalo with a razor at night. And the silk is from, you know, and it is more challenging to defeat spiders from bigger dens. I always do that as one of the very first things, like wipe out a bunch of spider nests when they're still tier 1 in the earliest days of autumn. The insulation on a beefalo hat is twice as strong as the one on a winter hat. You will need a beefalo horn and 8 pieces of wool here. In order to obtain the beefalo horn, you will have to kill one. Just pick one, feed it a couple of pieces of cut grass or twigs, lure it away, and then slaughter it. Attack a once, then dodge, and then get five to six attacks in and dodge again. Rinse repeat until it's dead. Beefalo horn only has a 33% drop chance, so you might have to do this a couple times. On my first day of winter in a new world, I always make sure to pay this guy a visit. And we want to do that because killing him again gives you access to two very powerful items, the Tamashanta and the Walking King. Bring a weapon, a lock suit, and your winter equipment. Don't try to fight McTask or his hounds as soon as you encounter him. He will run away from his iglo until he it decides it's time to retreat, at which you will be able to get some free attacks in with, without any attempt of him to escape or fight back. The hounds are bound to the mini McTask, so at that point there is a high chance that they're not even around anymore. With the walrus task you can craft a walking cane, and providing it with a permanent 25% movement speed boost and it has no durability, so it is definitely an item every player needs to get their hands on as soon as they can. The Tamo Shanta has the same insulation value as a winter hat, but on top of it, it provides you with a nice sanity boost over time. Okay, stop. Let's address this piece of sh- we are going to need a better weapon than a spear in order to defeat the Eclipse. 
you can use a Thulsa club, a handbag or what I will show you here, a tentacle spike. Just explore the swamp until you come across either some spiders fighting a tentacle or maybe some worms fighting a tentacle and wait till they killed it. With a little bit of luck it will leave a tentacle spike behind. A single of which is all we need to defeat the eclipse. But you want to make sure you save it for him. As protective headgear we will choose the football helmet, which is very cheap, with what, just one pigskin and one rope. In order to acquire the pigskin you can just hammer down a pig house, which you can find in abundance in the Decidious Forest. With a cost of 2 ropes and 8 logs, the log suit is quite cheap to make, but will provide ample of protection, all we're going to need basically against the eclipse. Now that we got all the equipment we need for the fight, we want to make sure we uh, gather some healing food. We shouldn't really need any, but you know, just in case, it's always good to be overprepared. I am going with blue caps in this case, which can be picked at night in the Deciduous Forest as well. They do restore 20 health in exchange for a little bit of sanity. We will also prepare a little campfire, because that will make sure we won't be completely frozen from his attacks. The Eclipse will drain your sanity at an insanely fast rate, which is why we're going to tank and spank him, and not trying to kite him. I did record this video during Winter's Feast, which is why he looks different from your usual Deerclops, and this one also has the laser attack, and it's going to work with this one, which means it's also going to work with the base version of Deerclops. Just make sure you stand right next to the campfire. Have faith, and don't run away in fear. If your tentacle spike and all your armor is at 100% as well as your health is on full, with a basic maximum amount of health of 150 like with a character like Wilson, the Eclops will absolutely die before he can kill you. In this case you just deal more damage than him. However, you want to make sure to dodge the first attack and get the first attack in yourself. In your first year, the Eclops will always show up on day 30 as soon as nightfall hits. He is attracted to buildings. As soon as you can hear him roar, you have a couple of seconds to leave your base. But we can also use this to advantage. We can use a wooden sign as a bait, because that counts as a structure as well. I know a lot of people also struggle with food in DST during winter. This video is already quite long, and there isn't really a, oh, it's winter, and during winter we eat uh, certain foods. No, what you want to do is learn how to establish a high-yield food farm, like Pigman, or Bunny Man, or go to the Luna Island and get stone fruit and bull kelp, or farm a lot of honey. All these ideas really deserve their video on their own, and as you can see, you know, there is always so much to learn about this game. Therefore, I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you so, so much for watching. I know this was a lot to cover. Feel free to give me a like or even subscribe if you want to see more of these kind of videos, if you want to see more guides. Uh, say hello over on Twitch. And let me know down in the comments if these ideas were any helpful to you. See you around. Bye-bye.